Hello everyone, and welcome to FreeCAD Newbie. Today we are going to draw a simple spoon, the one that we often use while eating. For this video I'm using Blueprint from PlenosConSiri.blogspot. I've linked the post in description below in case you want to download the Blueprint. With that out of the way, let's start drawing. Our first step is to create the top view of the spoon, so let's switch to Sketcher Workbench. Create a new sketch, then choose XY Plane. Let's move a bit so the origin in the left side. Create a new arc with its center in X axis. Here we set its radius to 10 millimeters. Make both vertices aligned vertically. Then make the arc touches the sketch's origin. Next, draw a pair of arcs, one in top, one in bottom. Set its radius to 40 millimeters. Then make both arcs have equal size. Make the top arc tangent with the first arc, then do the same for the bottom arc. Finally, make both hanging vertices aligned vertically. Next, create a pair of arcs with its center in x-axis and one vertex touching the previous arc. Make both arcs tangent against its neighbor. There is a redundant constraint, so let's remove it. Set the top arc's radius to 16.5 millimeters. Then make both hanging vertices aligned vertically. Set the distance between first and the last arc center to 22.5 millimeters. Next, draw a pair of arcs again, one in top, one in bottom. Make both arcs tangent against its neighbor. Make both arcs have equal size, then make the hanging vertices aligned vertically. Set the bottom arc's radius to 6 millimeters. Then set vertical distance between both arcs center to 18 millimeters. Next, we will create an arc for the end of spoon's handle. Draw an arc away from the spoon's head with its center on x-axis. Make its distance to 105 millimeters. Unfortunately, now our arc became big, so let's adjust it a bit. Then set its radius to 6 millimeters. Make both vertices aligned vertically. Now we draw a huge arc for the handle. Set its radius to 600 millimeters. Then make it tangents against its neighbor. Finally, we draw another huge arc for the bottom. Then make it equal with its pair. Now the sketch is fully constrained, so we can close it. For clarity, let's rename the sketch to Top View. Next, we need to create the side view of the spoon. So let's create a new sketch, then choose XZ Plane. Draw an arc with one vertex on the sketch's origin. Set its radius to 40 millimeters, then make its vertices distance to 54 millimeters. Next, draw another arc, then set its radius to 20 millimeters. Make it tangents with its neighbor, then make its vertices distance to 12 millimeters. Last, draw a huge arc for spoon's handle. Set its radius to 500 millimeters. Adjust the shape a bit, then make it tangents with the previous arc. Make its vertices distance to 84 millimeters. Finally, make the horizontal distance to 143.5 millimeters. 
Now the sketch is fully constrained so we can close it. For clarity, let's rename the sketch to Side View. As you can see, currently the top view is not needed and make our viewport a bit busy, so let's move it a bit. Select the top view, then click Placement. Here, I set its Z to 50 millimeters, then OK. Now both sketches are clearly separated, which better for us. Next, we need to draw location of each spoon section, following the blueprint. Let's go to Front View. Then create new sketch for XZ plane. Create external reference for spoon's head and handle. Next, create one line in the head, one line in handle vertex, and one line in handle's edge. Select all lines, then make them equal size. Here, I set their height to 10 millimeters. Set the distance between heads line and origin to 10 plus 22.5 millimeters. Next, set the distance between heads and finals line to 105 millimeters. Now the sketch is fully constrained, so we can close it. Let's rename the sketch to Section Position. The next step is to create each section's width. Let's hide the side view. Then create a new sketch on XY plane. Make external references to all sections. Make another references to spoon's edges. Next, we need to create line for each section, with its vertices touching spoon's edges. Make line in the head touches its section. Do the same for the other lines. Now the sketch is fully constrained, so we can close it. Let's rename the sketch to Section Width. Our next step is to draw arc for each section. Currently, top view is useless, so let's hide it. Now let's draw the first section. Select its bottom vertex, then its edge. It might be a bit hard since the vertex is small, but make sure to select it first. Once selected correctly, create a new sketch. There are several methods to attach the sketch. If you want to learn more, check out this tutorial by Mango Jelly. For now, what we want is a line OXY. As you can see, our sketch origin currently is correctly in the vertex we selected before. Unfortunately, the direction is wrong. With the top currently in right side, we need to rotate it, so close the sketch. While on it, let's rename the sketch to Section A. Click Map Mode, then rotate its z-axis to minus 90 degrees. Open the sketch again, and now our direction is right. Let's adjust the view a bit. Create external reference to section's width. Draw an arc with its center on z-axis, then set its radius to 30 millimeters. Make its edge touch the origin. Make both vertices horizontally aligned. Drag the vertex, then align it vertically against section's width. Now the first section is finished. The next step is to draw the second section. Select the vertex, then the edge, then create a new sketch. Like before, the direction is wrong, so just close it. Click Map Mode, then rotate its z-axis to minus 90 degrees. While on it, let's rename the sketch to Section B. Open the sketch again, then draw the arc like before. Create external reference to section's width. Draw an arc with its center on z-axis. Make both vertices horizontally aligned. The only difference is the radius is 10 millimeters. Make its edge touch the origin. Drag the vertex, then align it vertically against section's width. 
Now the second section is finish it. Next is to the third section. Like before, select vertex, then edge, then create a new sketch. Like before, the direction is wrong, so just close it. Click map mode, then rotate its z-axis to minus 90 degrees. Like before, here we rename the sketch to section C. Open the sketch again, then draw the arc like before. Here is still the same as before, except now the section width is a bit far below. Next, draw the arc, then set its radius to 40 millimeters. Drag it a bit, then make its edge touch the origin. Align both vertices horizontally, then drag it to center. Align the vertex vertically against section's width, and we are done. Now all sections arc are drawn. Section width is useless now, so we can hide it. Same with the position. In other hand, we need side view now, so toggle it. Now we just need to sweep each section. Switch to part workbench, then click sweep tool. First we will sweep the head, so select section A. Then set its path to head's arc. Done. Then click OK. Let's rename this sweep to Front Sweep. Click Sweep Tool again. Now we will sweep the handle, so select section B and C. Set its path to handle's arc. Done. Then click OK. Let's rename this sweep to Handle Sweep. Now we just need to sweep between this edge to this edge. To do so, click Shape Builder tool. Choose Wire from Edges. Select the head edge, then click Create. Now we can close the tool. Here I rename this wire to Section Neck. Open Sweep Tool again, then select Section Neck and Section B. For its path, select the neckline. Done. OK. Here I rename this sweep to Neck Sweep. Now the sweep is finished, so we could hide all supporting edges, collapse all sweeps, then fuse all sweep into one. Here I name it Sweep Fusion. Now we just need to create the final spoon shape. Show back the top view, then click Extrude Tool. Here, I set its length to 80 millimeters and in reverse direction. For clarity, here I rename it to Top Pad. Now select both object, then click Intersection Tool. Now we get the spoon shape that we want. Here I name it Intersection. The last step is to extrude it. In Z direction, for one millimeter. Here I name it Intersection Pad. We still have two supporting sketch. To make it tidier, here I put it in a simple group. Here I name it Spoon. Then let's hide the visible sketches. And now, the spoon is finished. For additional challenge, you can create a fork. The workflow is the same as Spoon, the only difference is the shape of top view. That's all for today. And I hope this tutorial is useful for you. See you later in the next video.